The Lull Words, that's our word, brought to you by... I still don't know yet. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with, with my sponsor. Uh, Nerd Box, I guess. Um, <laughs> and this is Jim Jesus, and I'm here with the uh, Brian Kaplan apologist, Neil Hamiltonian to sauce. Do you still want to announce who you are by name now? Because I know you took down all your YouTube videos. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. I don't care. Okay. <laughs> Matt Pritchard then. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've said it on the show a bunch of times anyway. So. Yeah, yeah. It's too late now. <laughs> your employers are going to find you and be like, oh, my God, he's a neo-Nazi. <laughs> uh, I certainly hope they don't think that. <laughs> yeah. We'll wait until the thing comes out. I'm going to put like, a big swastika as the show image. Oh, please, <laughs> please. Seriously, do not do that. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> the show is called We're Literally Nazis Now. We're not... <laughs> For the record, we are not literally no, or no, figuratively no, no. Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, I guess we should start, talk about a little bit something topical. This Donna Brazil thing. Like I only heard like bits and pieces about it. And I kind of already kind of assumed the rest. So you probably should, you probably know more about this than I do. Since your profile picture right now is Donna Brazil on Facebook. <laughs> it is like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Uh, I'm going to see if I can pull the article up. Um, but yeah, so she publishes this article that it reads like trash fiction. It's like, it's like a, like a Dan Brown novel. I like how it starts uh, like out, how she starts out by saying, like, I lit candles and played gospel music. <laughs> yeah, it's like the most insane pandering, like, nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> and basically, she just completely throws Hillary under the bus. It's just beautiful. full on. It is, it's incredible. You know, uh, accuses her of sabotaging uh, the the Sanders campaign. Um, I, think, I think what happens and uh, what happened was that when Obama left office in 2016, his or, uh, his um, previous campaigns had left the DNC like more than $20 million in debt or something mm. just absurd. And so Hillary came in and through this thing, it was like the Clinton Victory Fund or something. I don't know. Um, they basically said, OK, we'll assume the debts and take care of it. Uh, and it also allowed for some sort of loophole where people like uh, Harvey Weinstein could uh, donate more to their more to them than they than they uh, could under regular rules. Um, and Donna Brazil writes this thing where she's saying that like she was completely in the dark about yeah. all of this, was completely in the dark about the finances of the DNC, and then it turns out that there's like no money whatsoever hillary took all of it to spend on her campaign took it took it from like uh all the the democratic parties of each state just like drained all of their funds uh drained their infrastructure to put it into her campaign uh and she of course just lumps all of this on um on debbie wasserman schultz and uh hillary clinton and uh it's it's like the most hilarious thing I've ever read. Just the way it is written, it's like you would have to be absolutely brain dead to think that she was not involved in this. Uh, <laughs> and, and it reads like trash fiction. Like all of the, it has like all of these just would have to be completely made up quotes of like what she said and uh, and what Bernie said when she called him. Uh, yeah. So this is a she says uh, I had to keep my promise to Bernie. I was in agony as I dialed him. <laughs> Keeping this secret was against everything that I stood for, all that I valued as a woman and as a public servant. Hello, Senator. I've completed my review of the DNC, and I did find the cancer. <laughs> but I will not kill the patient. <laughs> but the patient is cancer. <laughs> the patient is the ca like. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah. And. And she's like building up Bernie as being this like stoic hero. And it's like, okay, well, what do we have to do? And she basically says that, you know, we got to swallow this pill and, and go on for the sake is of the party. Is it a red pill? I, <laughs> I, I don't know. It's possible. <laughs> um, but it's, it's like, it's, it's unbelievable the way that, that, that she writes this and like, and, and she also says uh, that, um, you know, he asks her, you know, I've heard all the polls, but, Donna Brazil, what do, what do you think uh, about Senator Clinton's chances? And she says, I don't trust the polls. You know, 
I've I've gone out and I've seen the general dislike for Hillary, so I I don't think she's gonna win. Yeah, yeah, fucking right. Yeah, fucking right. Everybody thought she was gonna win. Everybody, except for like a few select people who made a lot of money in the betting markets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everybody thought that Hillary was gonna win. Yeah, and and, and um, a lot of people who thought he was gonna win or thought she was gonna lose rather, uh, which is still right we're just basing it based on like how they seen everything. Like they, they keep going to the rallies and they see how crazy the rallies are and they see her on TV and it's just like a small sporadic group. But at the same time, there's a lot of people that are like, I don't like her, but I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll vote for her just because I don't like the other guy more. And that, that pretty much oh, wraps sure. up most of the, most of the voters. And like, I, I remember talking and I used to use this as an example of why I was skeptical, of whether or not Donald Trump would win is because I kept, referring this to the zeitgeist thing because the zeitgeist that uh, was like everywhere all over the internet ron paul too uh yeah that's just not just them and it just seems like they're so big but then when you actually start doing the counting you're like oh there's only like maybe a hundred thousand of them worldwide (laughs) there's not that many of them Yeah, it's like nothing yeah Yeah. so if you're in this Um, bubble it seems like oh yeah he's gonna win in a landslide And and he actually didn't win in a landslide he lost like three million votes but uh where he won is he picked up a lot of states where Hillary was just assumed to have won and just, she just never went yeah. to Wisconsin and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and the other thing, like, this is what I think a lot of people get wrong about this too, is that, you know, they, everyone's like, well, she won the popular vote. How can she not be president and blah, 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 blah. But it's like their strategies are yeah. based on capturing electoral votes. If it, like, if it was a, a, just based on the popular vote, both of them would have run very, very different campaigns. Yeah. Um, and it's possible he still might have won. I don't know. Um, I was caught completely off guard. <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I don't really like predicting things at all anymore. Uh, I didn't really like it beforehand, but now I'm just like, well, I don't know anything. Because yeah. uh, <laughs> I thought I thought she had it in the bag. I thought she was unstoppable. Um, and yeah, I mean, this whole thing, it, this is the thing that is really interesting about this particular thing as well, is that it was public knowledge like documented that Hillary basically deliberately sank Bernie and mm-hmm. like they cheated him uh, during the the Democratic primaries. Yeah, and, and we knew about this during the 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 general. Yeah, it was everybody knew yeah. about it. But if you said this to people, like they would shout you down. And then there was all of these articles that came out afterward after the election that were like, "No, Hillary Clinton." It's like, "No, Hillary Clinton did not rig the primaries." Here's what happened. You know, you were all wrong. And it's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, we weren't. <laughs> Nobody was wrong about this, yeah. except for the people who were blindly ignoring, you know, leaked government documents <laughs> that, that proved that she did this. Yeah. And spirit cooking, which I don't know, like lighting candles and listening to gospel or lighting candles and hail, uh, hailing Satan. Uh, I think I like the Satan one a little bit better. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, that man. That stuff was nuts. <laughs> at the end, at the end of the election, I, I'm still just like, like blown away by some of the things that you know, the theories that came out about what these things meant. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. I've, I've been kind of getting interested in Satan. Like, I'm not a Satanist. I'm not getting into that. But once you kind of mm-hmm. like look into what Satanism really is versus what like Christian thinks, Christians think it is, it's they're completely different things. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're just no, atheists totally. who just use Satan as a metaphor. Um, yeah, but still, well, that's, uh, yeah. An- Anton LaVey, the guy who started, uh, the church of Satan, I believe mm-hmm. basically his, his philosophy, he said it was, uh, it was Ayn Rand's objectivism with like dressed up with, uh, like ritual and tradition. Um, so they're, uh, yeah, they're not like, they don't like worship the devil. Most of them don't believe there's a devil, uh, yeah. <laughs> Right, so. they're the two big camps in Satanism. There's like two. There's the Levians, and then there's the I forget what the other one. I think it's just the the Church of Satan. It's the it's uh the Temple of Satan. No, the and the reason I know this, yeah, the reason I know this is now <laughs> because I live in Bushwick, and there's a lot of them out here yeah. in in Brooklyn. Um, and some of them are nuts, and some of them are actually like regular people. <laughs> the, uh, but the, the, the temple, temp- the temple is. The, yeah, the Temple of Satan. These are the people who put up like the uh, statue of Baphomet and Baphomet. and uh, yeah, and um, what what the hell was it? Uh, it was like like Ohio or yeah. something at a courthouse. Uh, but they also do things like 
they basically have said like, no, we try and like use the laws to uh, do things like fight for like abortion rights and also for um, like it was either keeping prayer out of schools or allowing <laughs> like yeah safe trolls. prayers in schools. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, it. They're and pretty much they, just trolls. These people have, have literally told me that they're like, yeah, we're yeah. I mean, like we're serious about like these policies, but we're trolling people. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And it's great. I love it, man. But, if you had asked me, like, <laughs> you had asked me like five years ago, like, do you think you're gonna know Satanists? <laughs> like, they'll just be in your neighborhood at the bars you go to. It's like, no, of course not. But yeah. you know, things change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like I like I like the Levian Satanists. The, the trolls, I like them on a different plane. <laughs> like, I like them because they're trolls. I disagree with their yeah. some of their policies, I, but. I, I res- yeah, me too. And that's the thing. I respect trolling. That doesn't mean yeah. I agree with every troll that happens. But, you know, I I do find it entertaining when people get upset about nonsense, yeah. you know, when they lose their minds about stuff. But, yeah, speaking of Satanists, um, down to Brazil, I think it's interesting that, like, um, <laughs> like <laughs> nice segue back, I guess. Um it was good. Yeah, Donna Brazil was the one that was leaking CNN questions for the debate to, yeah, to, to Hillary. Hillary. How could she yeah. say that she doesn't know anything about this? It's it's, it's like it is. I when I read this, I was just like dumbstruck. I was like, oh my god! Like you are just <laughs> like she's making herself out to be this like you know tireless fighter for what is right. And like, oh, I was just so caught off guard by all of this. It's like you were part of the corruption. Yeah. Like part of like some of the what most people would say was the worst parts of her corruption, you know, yeah. cheating in the in like the most public forum possible. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really incredible. And and then Heather, uh, what's her name, Elizabeth Warren, um, uh, came out and you, the, someone asked her on TV, you know, like, do you believe that Hillary Clinton, uh, you know rigged the campaign against Bernie uh, meddled in the election. She said, yes, I do. Like mm. people are, go- they are going to pile on her, just absolutely pile on her. Yeah. And you know, the TYT people are going to be piling on her too. Well, they, they've already kind of, they started doing this like during the election results were coming out and it looks like she was going to lose. Then they are were you talking like, about the, the young Turks. Yeah. TYT. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So they were like, we're, oh, we're going after her hardcore. This is <laughs> like, but you were backing yeah. her the entire time. Like, it's, it's, yeah. as soon as Bernie so the, was losing. In their was... defense, like, I, I do get it. Like, you know, the Bernie people were like, okay, you know, we'll hold our nose because Trump is so bad that we'll, even this person that we hate, <laughs> Hillary, who's done us wrong, you know, we'll we'll hold our nose and we'll vote for her because we don't want Trump. So, like, mm-hmm. I, I do get that. Like, I, I don't think they were being, like, complete hypocrites or anything like that. But uh, it's... It was funny because when when Hillary's book came out, which also just has like it just sounds like it's written by an insane. Person. I like how the like, uh, I like the meme that was going around about that book. Like the answer <laughs> and the question are both on the cover. What happened, yeah. Hillary Rodham <laughs> Hillary Clinton? Clinton. Yeah. yeah, but but she went after the Bernie people and was like, yeah, I lost the election because of you know it was like. Uh, lots of different things. White women who voted for Trump. I lost it because of uh, men. I lost it because of Bernie voters. Who are, it's like, are you kidding me? Like there was a lot of the- there was a lot of people who were like scorched earth about Bernie. They were like, I'll go and vote for, for sure. Trump just because I can't stand her. For sure, yeah. but a lot. But I would say a much larger percentage of them sucked it up and went and yeah. voted for her. And she's like, this is your fault. <laughs> <It's> like. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, Michael Malice brought up a good point on, on Twitter. Uh, and by the way, if, if you're listening to this and you don't follow Michael Malice on Twitter, you absolutely need to. It's gold. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, but he, he was saying, you know, it's like, okay, if, if this is like what Donna Brazil and Elizabeth Warren and all of these Democrats are saying in public about Hillary, imagine what they're saying behind closed mm-hmm. doors. It's got to be an absolute bloodbath right now. And he said another thing, um, that was like, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, I thought that the Republican Party was in way more disarray than the Democrats were. But it's like now I have no idea <laughs> like <Yeah>. who's, <laughs> whose house is, is, is burning down faster. Yeah. And, and it looks like as much as crap as Nick Sarwak is getting, which I think is much deserved. I think like the Libertarian LP is starting to get like legitimacy, <laughs> but they're kind of, who, they kind of squandered that? it. The LP. Oh, Nick Sarwak. 
uh, he's the chair for the Libertarian Party National. Is this uh, the car is this salesman? The guy? Yeah, the one that he's a car salesman. Yeah, he's a used car is salesman. The, he's the one. Is this the North Korea tweet thing? Oh yeah, like he, he he keeps squandering every opportunity he gets to make the party like somewhat legitimate. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's I mean that's that's I think that's in the bylaws of the yeah, Libertarian yeah, yeah, Party. Yeah, <laughs> uh, But yeah, uh, he's it's also the one that's been going after like Tom Woods and stuff like that. And and I understand a lot of his like I understand a lot of his criticism and I get a lot of it. But at the same time, it's like. Uh, <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> like, this is just this is just drama. Like you're, you're just using like you know some legitimate concerns with with a lot of the the Rothbardians tactics of of yesteryear, mm-hmm. which they don't even do anymore. I, I mean, know it's been twenty years, twenty five years. Like, yeah, and they're <laughs> he's dredging this old stuff up to be like, well, you know, that means that Tom Woods is bad now. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and this is the other thing. Like Tom Woods in the nineties. It wasn't until the early 2000s that he w- he even called himself a libertarian. He wasn't a libertarian. He was like a a, a conservative. Yeah, he was a Buchananite. Um, yeah, he's a Buchananite. He still kind of has a lot of that. that. Yeah, he still has a lot of like leanings to that too. Like he'll still bring on Pat Buchanan on the show. <laughs> yeah, but. and the thing is, like, there's like a one or two things. You know, like Pat Buchanan's always been pretty good on foreign policy. You know, yeah. like he's like, hey. We shouldn't go and and bomb everyone. And so, like, I, I'm willing to give people a pass on the issues on which they're they're solid and criticize them for the things where they're not. Yeah, I don't believe in any of this this packaged deal nonsense where it's like you you like something one one part of something that someone said. It's like, oh well, you believe everything that they say. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, like I have I have issues with Rothbard, but I don't say that Rothbard is bad because the last couple of years of his life, he was kind of pandering to the uh, paleos. He did a yeah. lot of great work long before that. And was, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're still publishing new books by Rothbard. Yeah. Like, it's been 22 years since the man died. He's basically Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's the Tupac of libertarian. <laughs> they just, I mean, they just released a new, a, a new book. That's like a, a, collection of all of his articles that were uh, written on the progressive Are we going to find out that Lou Rockwell is the one that shot him? <laughs> like, is he the yeah. Biggie Smalls? <laughs> <laughs> Man. Okay, that was too soon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man, Rothbard, I mean, yeah, he was, he, you're right. Like, I, he, Rothbard's strategy politically was always very poor. Um, and you can't be, you can't be good at everything. And Rothbard was good at more things than is usually humanly possible. Yeah. But you know, he he allied with whoever he thought had anti-state sentiment at the time. Like he he basically like with the new left in the late '60s, he was you know sitting on panels with people who were literal communists. But that's because they were trying you know to stop wars and had a distrust of the state. And it's like. That was probably a mistake too. Yeah. <laughs> um, there was a but, mistake. I think he realized that was a mistake. Yeah, and then he went this and made the same mistake with someone else <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> several more times. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like the guy was just an intellectual giant. He wrote things that are like so influential, way more influential now than than they were when he was alive because of the internet. Like now, people can actually find his work and read it. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like I'm not going to criticize Rothbard for for any of that stuff. Like the guy, he was so solid. He basically formalized libertarianism as we know it. Yeah. And one of my friends kind of put it pretty clearly, and I, I was like, "Yeah, that's that's a really good point." And I kind of agreed with it. I just didn't didn't hear anybody express it that right before. It was he was like, "Well, it hasn't everybody's tactics failed so far?" <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, everybody's tactics well, has failed. I know that's the thing. Like. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, like who, who in libertarianism is making has been s- like hyper successful? There's Probably been Ron Paul. Ron Paul, yeah. yeah. And that was not any sort of deliberate strategy that he no. had. He literally just you know said what he thought was right for twenty five years or thirty years in Congress. Nobody listened to him, and he just happened to be on stage at the right moment in history for people to be receptive to his ideas. Like people were tired of the Iraq war. People were tired of 
you know, what, what the Republicans and Democrats had been feeding uh, to people for, for years. And it, it paid off that way. It was like Ron Paul, Ayn Rand is obviously, I think, probably the most influential person uh, in kind of libertarian, modern libertarian history, simply just because, like, how many people found out about free market economics and, like, you know, morality that doesn't, you know, <laughs> depend on you hating yourself and, <laughs> and sacrificing every every ounce of your wealth, you know, to, to other people, like, she was incredibly influential. She was influent. She had this huge influence on Rothbard, but it's like, you've got Ayn Rand, Ron Paul, and probably Milton Friedman on, on certain issues. Like he yeah. was very influential with, with a couple of his books and his, his TV show. Um, and even in government for better and for worse on some, some issues, but outside of those people, who's done anything good? Who has, has been a success for Liberty Anyone in the Libertarian Party? No, never. <laughs> they've had, you know, they've been around since the seventies. Well, Harry, Br Harry Brown was pretty awesome, though. I'll give oh yeah, Harry Brown yeah. for Harry sure, Brown for pretty, sure. Michael Badnark would have been pretty awesome if he didn't start going like, "Oh, the chemtrails and the psychiatrists are coming to kill us." And <laughs> I don't even know who that is, but <laughs> that oh, sounds... he, he ran in two thousand four. He did. He did the the Constitution class. I didn't even know what a libertarian was back oh, then. Oh, you know what? Come to think of it, that probably was a bad thing because that's how Cantwell became a libertarian was he found the Constitution class online. Oh, man. Cantwell. Uh, yeah, and there's a lot of problems with that Constitution class. Like, like I think <clears> every <throat> quote that he brought up, like, because every, every chapter he had, like, a quote on the cover. And I think, like, I went through and I think I, 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 there was, like, one or two quotes that were real. All of the other ones were fake. <laughs> it's kind of <laughs> like all everybody who quotes the founding fathers usually gets the wrong one. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, like the family. And it's like are... how many how many of these quotes were real? You know, like mm -hmm. yeah, if you like a lot of the Thomas Jefferson ones, fake. Um, a lot of the ben Benjamin Franklin ones, fake. Ben Franklin, yeah, yeah. Hamilton gets quoted correctly, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Malice has convinced me on pretty thoroughly on on Hamilton. Uh, yeah, well, I, th I think Hamilton is, is was legal. Go well, ahead. I was going to say that Hamilton is probably no different than most of the other founding fathers. Just like they had a lot of good things to say and even more bad things to say. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. So, um, yeah. yeah, no, I completely agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, let's talk about Hoppe since you got to meet Hoppe. You got to be in, was it physical oh, yeah. proximity? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was physically proximate. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, at the last second, um, the 35th anniversary Mises dinner, um, a couple people dropped out at a friend's table. And so I got to uh, go and have dinner and meet, uh, you know, Guido Holzman and Hans Hoppe, uh, Tom Woods, a um, bunch of people. And it was, uh, it was pretty wild. And like, I, I actually, I really hate going to like libertarian events and whatnot now. Cause I just, I'm so over it. I don't care. Like I am obviously I am a libertarian and I, you know, think the non-aggression principle is, is, is all good and whatnot. Have but been going uh, to the, I just, what was the one you have by you? The Hoppe high type preference hour, high type oh, preference ho hour? Uh, hop hour. Uh, that kind of fell apart a couple of years ago. Um, we have it every once in a while. It's like definitely like several times per year. They didn't but, have enough um, rusty spoons. I could take it. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's really no, inside actually, baseball. Uh, Go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, it's like this is like super super <laughs> inside baseball, but yeah. um, but uh, there's this guy uh, you probably know him on online Jesse Forgione, mm -hmm. um, who was kind of the organizer of it and was kind of the glue for for that event being like a weekly thing, and uh, he ended up moving out of New York, and it just kind of totally petered out, and so it's now it's like when a friend comes to visit from out of town or something, we'll all get together, um. But it's been much, much less regular than it was uh, years ago. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, the the hoppa dinner, yeah, it was it was really cool. Um, food was okay, uh, <laughs> but uh, Hoppa gave a speech, and uh, a lot of a lot of it's really good. Uh, you know, he's always got something not great to say in it, but um, it was it was really cool because it was talking about his um, his time with Rothbard. The whole kind of theme of this of this anniversary weekend was to celebrate Rothbard. And uh, he talked about kind of coming of age 
with Rothbard and how he he started off as like this kind of socialist. And uh, when he was finishing his habilitation degree, um, which rehabilitation. is rehabilitation, no, not rehabilitation. <laughs> well, <you're, it's, laughs> uh, well, he was the, a socialist, uh, so yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. Um, but he, the degree, I think it's actually in, in Europe, it's considered, uh, I think higher than a PhD in some circumstances. Uh, it, at, at any rate, he, uh, he was, he found, uh, like Mises and then Rothbard's works and, uh, ended up writing to Rothbard and Rothbard wrote back to him. And finally he decided, you know, I'm going to move to the United States. And it was, it was really interesting getting his perspective on it because he thought like, you know, okay, so this guy, he's not really well regarded in, in academia like he should be, but he expected that since Rothbard was such um, a voice for free markets, that he would it, he would have some sort of position within the business community. Like people, he would be well endowed uh, financially and uh, be kind of supported by uh, American uh, business and enterprise. And when he got to New York, and found his, um, you know, saw his office and his home, he realized that it was just not the case at all. Uh, Rothbard, you know, had a very poor academic position uh, and lived in a really tiny uh, apartment in New York City that was just filled to the, you know, just bursting with books. Um, and he said it was a, it was quite, he felt kind of embarrassed uh, himself and couldn't admit this to Rothbard for a long time because he found out what Rothbard made at the university and it was less than Hoppe's scholarship had been mm. uh, when he was going to university. And uh, then kind of, yeah, yeah, it was, it was great. Like he talked about, you know, just what Murray was like and went over his, what he considered like uh, a couple of his flaws, like how he was, um, too humble, like humble to an absolute fault and how it kind of screwed them over a little bit when they went to university of Las Vegas together, they had a plan UNLV, basically go to rebels. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> they, their plan was basically to make it like the most hardcore free market school, um, in the nation. And they had, uh, ideological backing on, uh, like the, it was like the board of trustees or whatever it was in the, in the department. Um, and, then uh, some people found out that they were these like hardcore free market types and lobbied to get this, uh, this like communist put literal communist put into the <laughs> economics department. And Hans was like begging him, like you have some clout, you have a reputation and like you're, they, they wanted you here because of your, your intellectual prowess and your, your accolades and your, and your work, uh, like put your, you know, use your name, use your name and block this guy. And he didn't do it, and that doomed them. Um, and they had like another opportunity to try and uh, and set things right with the school. And Rothbard finally intervened, um, kind of kind of put his humility behind uh, him. But it was it was too late at that point. And then the ideological support that they have like left because you know these people were old and they retired, and it just kind of fizzled from there. Um, but it was it was really interesting. I got to I got to meet him, had him sign my uh, my copy of Human Action. Uh, met Guido Holzman. Uh, got a uh, got him to sign my copy of his book. And uh, Michael Malice uh, brought a little toy helicopter with him as an <laughs> in joke with Hans Hoppe because he's he's confirmed fascist. Uh, confirmed, yeah. It's oh which God. is which is ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, the man, the man has literally like abolished the government. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't hurt anybody, and uh, and yeah. So he got this picture of him with with a toy helicopter, and the internet lost its mind yeah. over this. It was hilarious. Yeah, because people have no sense of humor. <laughs> like, no. Because I remember, oh, I remember when that whole thing happened, the whole helicopter when it first got started, the hands hopping, Herman Hoppe physical removal. It was mm -hmm. making fun of the fact that. Hoppe has this weird kind of way of speaking and it was poorly yeah. written that, that, that whole sentence was kind of, cause I guess it kind of came from his, his English as a second language and he's Germanic and the way the Germans speak, it's always in kind of like weird absolutes. Yeah. 
Oh, oh there's my app, your laundry. My, my timer. Yeah, right. I got to change my laundry over, folks. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I'll do a, a, an advertisement for, for NerdBox while you're gone. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll be back in like 10 minutes. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. Okay, there it goes. You're welcome. Hey, everybody. Jim Jesus here. Are you guys really wishing you could spend top dollar every month for leftover crap that couldn't be sold in an actual store so they take it back off the shelves, shove it in a box, and sell it to losers like you? Well, then check out Dork Box. It has all of your dorkiest crap that comes in a box every month. This month's theme is Blade Runner. We've got a Wallace Corporation I'm With Hologram t-shirt, a replicant uh, My Replicant Child is an Honor Student bumper sticker, a flashlight that can project an image of joy on your wall so you can have your own holographic girlfriend, a replicant skin condom. Really? These people get laid? Well, then you need to check out Dorkbox for sure. You can get a hold of them at home.earthling.net forward slash tilde Dorkbox or check out AOL keyword Dorkbox to get yours today. And if you tell them Jim Jesus sent you, they will give you a free shave kit. I think I got my advertisements mixed up. Anyways, back to the show. All right, so we're back. Um, I think I think Dorkbox is actually a probably better sponsor than um, you know one of those <laughs> those meal catching services that you know like oh we'll give you everything that you want to cook. Yeah. In one box, just learn to fucking cook. <laughs> just learn to cook. It's not that Go hard. To the grocery store. Yeah. Watch a Gordon Ramsay episode or something. Jesus Christ. Anyways, um, where were we? Oh yeah, Hoppa. <laughs> Right, right. Dropping it like a tapa. Yeah, it was uh it was really cool. Um yeah, so everybody lost their minds over that picture. Uh and like you said, because they don't have a sense of humor, but um also just because everyone's crazy now. Um people think that you know, their political enemies are like literally trying to end civilization, no matter no matter who it is, what they say. Um it's just it's kind of getting out of hand. Yeah, you you need to assume like malice on the part of your enemies. Like nobody's doing this for the, for you know for for the what they feel is for a higher cause or whatever. It's always right. it's always like well they're doing this for self interest. And, and I'm sure there's are, there's some examples of that where it's true. Hillary Clinton's a good example. But yeah, usually, for sure. I mean, but the, the people but the people who who view that don't look at Donald Trump and say he would never. <laughs> But he is right. like that's 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 his whole mo. That's been his whole shtick is always yeah me 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 me. They're narcissists. But yeah, I, I saw the so uh, the 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 Hans Herbert Hoppe physical removal service. That was a joke based on this kind of weird way he he phrased this sentence in uh, Democracy: The God That Failed. Yeah, and to a degree, I understand what he was trying to say, which is you know if people are coming onto your private property or into a libertarian covenant, which you know you and a bunch of other people own, so it's your their private property, and they start saying things like, "Hey, maybe we should all vote to see you know how we should divide up you know your guys's property to people who can't afford it." Yeah, I should own your house. Yeah, they're basically they're basically threatening to take your stuff, trying to get you know. Yeah, by through like violence and physical yeah. force. And that's what voting and that's what communism is. That's what that's all he was saying. And you should, yeah. you should take them and remove them from your property. Not throw them out of the helicopter. Not throw them in yeah. a gas chamber. Not not, not <laughs> shoot them. You know, no. it's like yeah. the The other part of it though is that like I do think Hoppe, um, his kind of speculations on what a free society would look like are a little, a little dystopian. Yeah, like <laughs> re- <laughs> to say, to say the least. It's not a. It's not the kind of society that I think would grow out of like freedom. Like yeah. people, people have this like conflicting ideas are on based kind of on their, their own worldviews and in, in ideology. Um, like the uh, like very, very, very conservative libertarians have this idea that uh, that's kind of like the Hoppian idea that, you know, you would have just these like gated communities everywhere and they would be these like totally homogeneous communities and you could have you know very different communities side by side but largely they they believe that people will kind of separate themselves based on whether it's religion or ethnicity or just whatever and like i don't think that's the case like at all other people think it'll just be this like total free for all of just like everything is totally diverse and blah 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 it's like i really think it's going to be more like the internet you know, like it'll, it'll have 
this, this kind of like awesome, chaotic, uh, like beautiful, uh, like order to it. But, and you will have little pockets of, you know, people like they're kind of their tribe or whatever, but it's going to be a lot more dynamic and changing yeah. and, and cool and fun <laughs> than, than a lot of people, uh, would think it think it would turn out and it's like the other thing is it's like if you actually had a free market in everything and i mean like you know police <laughs> courts just literally everything it would probably look a lot different than anyone is anticipating because we're not remotely approximating that kind of a society yeah um yeah libertarians like to, to say like well this is what we what, what we would like right now yeah and they would say, like, well, in the future, that's what the preferences of everybody in a society that lives in this world would want. That's not true. They may actually want socialized programs, but they're going to do it voluntarily. Like, if you're going to live here, you have to pay this, you know, homeowners association that just makes sure that this bum, you know, gets some get some free top ramen every once in a while. You know, there's going to be yeah. there's going to be groups like that. I've heard people advocate for things like uh, anarcho Keynesianism. Why not? <laughs> like, why not? Oh, God, I'll pass. Oh, God, but why not? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's uh, yeah. I think it, people tend to think that their own preferences are what everyone else wants. Yeah, and I think that that is just completely insane. Um, it's 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 not how things actually work in the real world. Uh, as kind of a similar thing, I remember when I was in college, I took this course that was like trying to construct, you know, whether or not there was a case for, you know, there being a, like Jesus as a historical figure, like what evidence, like physical evidence do we have suggesting this person was real and blah, blah, blah. And one of the things was that one of these uh, scholars who very famously wrote on this topic said was that um, he gave up trying to find an answer on it. Because everyone who had gone before him and people who were his contemporaries, the the Jesus figure always ended up looking like they did in terms of their ideological outlook. They, it was like everyone was projecting their own idea of what he should have been and fitting the facts to kind of meet uh, to uh, trying to kind of try and grafting their own ideas onto whatever facts that they actually had. Um, and I think that. A lot of people do that with speculating on what a, you know, a free society would look like. Um, I know it would be a lot more prosperous and probably a lot more fun and a lot more peaceful, but beyond that, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I ended up meeting with, uh, you remember from YouTube, Aaron 0883, right? Uh, brain police. Is, is, no, I don't Is that brain police? Aaron 0880, he had like the beard. He had lived with Ex Omniverse for a while. Mm, I know if you saw maybe. his face. I know if you saw his face. He had like a baby face. Uh, he, used to, he was like no. one of the first people on YouTube, uh, YouTube, libertarians on YouTube that I saw bashing Molyneux back in the day. Right. Anyway. I don't know. Brain Police was the guy that, uh, I know that he was friends with Ex Omniverse, but he was the guy that uh, Brent Elements broke into his account and deleted all his videos. <laughs> Uh, that, I think it, that may be him. I, I, don't know I know Fringe Elements. Person. Yeah, Fringe Elements used, was going after Aaron's like business because he has a business in Riverside. Yeah, that's probably Brain Police. Okay. Yeah. So I ended up meeting up with him when I was in Riverside, and uh, you know, he said something that I remember him saying on his YouTube channel a while back that if you know if if he if he got if you know if Ancapistan were to exist, he would choose one where there were cameras everywhere. And, you know, like everything was being monitored and people would view that as dystopian. But he was like, I, I view that as safe just so long as it's not the state that's doing it and trying to bust me for, you know, smoking weed or something like that. Right. Um, which which kind I mean, of makes I sense. I, I don't know if I like that, but I mean, it's kind of already happening anyway. People yeah. are putting up cameras everywhere and cameras are just going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. They'll, they'll eventually be the size of a mosquito, you know, yeah. so <laughs> they're going to have those little, you know, mosquito sized drones. Why not? But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can kind of see how someone would want that. That may not be the world that I would want to live in, but that's fine. And I, I think a lot of people would want to live in a world like that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that my little world would probably be very different from what a lot of other people would want. And that's fine. <laughs> and then you can yeah. And there's, there's room want. for kind of all yeah. of it simultaneously. And it's like, guys um, just can have their little shit show. <laughs> yeah. starve Ugh. but yeah yeah everybody can choose yeah. what they want yeah exactly and that that's i mean that's a cool thing in my mind <laughs> yeah 
But Hoppe did give this speech about the alt right, and I thought it was just, it was bad. Uh, it was not great. No, it was uh, bad. It, he, it was. This, here's here's what I had a problem with most of all is that like he was talking about how Richard Spencer originally was a libertarian and he had like these really libertarian views and I know that uh, Kinsella had like said something in the past like you know like aside from all his white national stuff his his views on economics are pretty good and then like a, like weeks later he was like yeah like <laughs> Spencer was like yeah socialism is not that bad we should we should look into yeah. it um, yeah and saying things like we need like universal health care and we also need to you know spend tons and tons of federal money on like federal parks and and all this stuff it's just like the guy whatever he believed ages ago like he he's not no he hates he literally hates libertarians yeah, and yeah. libertarianism and says that to people yeah. <laughs> like, i saw that's all the speech he gave at auburn university which is like what, across the street or something like that from uh, from the mises, mises institute, institute yeah, yeah. And he was like, well, I'm not a libertarian, so whatever. Like, because he were like, someone was like, alleging, like, you're not a real libertarian. And he was like, I'm not. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, he you're right. was. Yeah. Yeah. He and, doesn't claim to be. And he, he was saying also, I, my friend Colin was there actually uh, shouting at him from the crowd, and they did not like him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, but he's. Am I he, being detained? I yeah. Want <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but he was, uh, yeah, he's, I didn't see the, uh, the whole video, but Colin was basically saying like he, he was, Spencer was upset because he was expecting a much bigger libertarian presence and was expecting them basically to act like, you know, Antifa, like scream at him and all this stuff. And like, there was some yelling at him, but it wasn't, he was just like, I thought you guys would be way more mad about this. And they were just like, <laughs> you're just stupid, dude. Yeah. Like, <laughs> But the reason why I brought that up is was because he was talking about how it, it, he was really sad that this 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 you know nice guy went down the wrong road, but and then like maybe a minute before or after I forget he was talking about how Jeffrey Tucker was a foe, and it was mostly oh, because uh, yeah because of some of his cause some of his views and I th I think I think Tucker does go a little extreme <laughs> against against the alt right which. Like I'm against the alt right, that's fine, but I think he takes it a little bit too far sometimes. But why would yeah, he draw it, him as a foe when they're, ideologically they're very similar it's, in uh, some respects? <laughs> but they're very they're much more similar to, to him than they would be to Richard Spencer. Like why is Richard Spencer? That's kind of sad. This 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 nice guy, but this guy's a foe because he wrote oh, this bad article. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well. I mean, I'm not going to go too much into it, but there's, I mean, it's a lot of like internal drama. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. I know a, a lot, lot of internal, internal shit drama, yeah. of, like, and it's all, it's like, it's personal stuff with everybody. So like, I, I, I get that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree. He was wait. He was like, he basically, it was just a reiteration of his speech of, uh, his criticisms of the paleocons back in the nineties. You know, he was saying like, uh, he agreed with them on a lot of cultural issues, unfortunately, but, Dis but it was just like, yeah, these people are complete socialists and there's nothing compatible yeah. with libertarianism there. And yeah, it was lame. I mean, they are, there's nothing that the alt-right has in common with like Rothbardian libertarianism at all. Now, the, the thing is that libertarianism, since it is basically just political philosophy and saying like, you know, what is the, you know, legitimate use of force of violence you know like where you know like and, and it's about non-aggression yeah sure i mean you could be a terrible person as long as you're not hurting someone uh like physically <laughs> or defrauding people physically yeah you can be a, you can be a dick yeah that doesn't mean you should be a dick but uh it's uh yeah i don't know that's that's one thing i i, I find hoppa's cultural views uh unrealistic in the way that he evaluates culture in a lot of cases um and also just like kind of revolting yeah. <laughs> and, and the way that he, he sees things playing out. Um, but again, this is like what I was saying earlier in the episode. I don't believe in package deals. Yeah. Uh, Hoppe has said an enormous amount of things uh, on, you know, criticizing the state and uh, he's written incredible articles. Like um, there's this one called the myth of national defense where, you know, he goes, he basically makes the case that, um, privatized defense agencies even at the national level would be far more restrained in terms of what they were willing to do you'd have a lot less you know like drone bombings of weddings and things like that um and 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 more actual security um 
he's he's said a lot of things that I that I do agree with. Um, but yeah, you don't you don't have that's the thing about ideas is you can agree with, you know, the things that are correct and reject the things that are incorrect. Yep. But um <laughs> Yeah, so I had some problems with that, and yeah, obviously, I thought it was going to go a, a little bit different after listening to Kinsella and Tom Woods talk about like what he may say in this speech before it happened, and then it didn't happen mm-hmm. the way they thought it was going to happen, or I thought it was going to happen, but but I should have expected it. <laughs> but um, I di- I did start reading Jeffrey Tucker's new book, um, mm-hmm. Right Wing Authoritarianism. You know, the other threat to liberty, and I thought it was just going to be like okay, I'm just going to be basically rereading stuff that I already knew. And there was a lot of information in there that I was like, that was just completely foreign to me. Like how, mm-hmm. and it, some of it had to do with like Lawrence Reed had written an article talking about like our libertarians left or right. And what he basically concluded was like back in the early days when the left and the right were actually developed, when it was actually like the left side of the aisle in, in the French parliament or whatever it was called. Right. They were like the liberals that we would associate with more like libertarians today. And mm-hmm. the people on the right were like authoritarians. Yeah. But then like later it, it turned into like a split between the Hegelians. So there was a left Hegelians like Marx and all them. And I forget who the right Hegelians were. Uh, and there was a split off from that. And that those kind of turned into the left and the right that we know today, which are just basically two different positions of authoritarianism. They agree like yeah, on exactly. a lot of different things. So when I hear people they, say like, they agree the, on the core principle of yeah, authority. Yeah. And I, I hear people like, who were, who will say like, you know, the left is terrible. And I'm like, I agree. So therefore we should support the right. They're like, whoa, 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 oh, whoa, yeah, whoa, no. whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah, exa- Hold on. exactly. It's like, they, and I, f- I feel like, uh, cause there's a, there's a lot of libertarians that have, you know, since, since the Ron Paul stuff really fizzled out, uh, a lot of libertarians have, have gone back to basically being v- very, very, very left-leaning or very, very, very right-leaning because they find some aspect of the opposing, uh, you know, political spectrum as we know it today to be revolting. And it's like, well, just because one aspect of one of, of their philosophies is revolting does not mean that the opposite people, the people on the other side of the aisle are your friends. Yeah. Like at all, like they're all garbage. And I think that there are some that are way too critical of the left in some cases, because now we're dealing with, you know, like the insanity that is social justice activism online and in reality, like it's, Mm -hmm. it's really like absurd and cartoonish, but on the flip side of that, you've also got the really absurd and cartoonish uh, people on the right that are, that are just as bad. And it's like, it's the you know the tribalism seems to be becoming more intense than it has been previously um and i haven't been alive that long so i can't really like speak to what it was I'm like sure it was, i'm sure it was like <laughs> the new left and <laughs> all that stuff with yeah i mean it, it created the neocons like the the, yeah. the the neocons were from the left and they just were so disgusted by you know the hippie right shit. yeah some of them were yeah. like outright marxists yeah uh that uh, but but the thing is, it's like you've got some people who are so critical of the left that they have completely ignored the right, and uh, you have some people that are so critical of the right that they've complete they're basically completely ignoring the left. And I look at uh, Tucker as being kind of one of those people, yeah. and that it's like he he seems convinced that the alt right is going to be this like mass political movement, and we're going to have like actual like brown shirts marching through american cities everywhere uh yeah. like and like they are essentially nobody they had one big event and they're they're in charlottesville and that was such a shit show that they're <laughs> they're kind of this is yeah this is the this is the thing about the alt-right is that people didn't know what they were unless you were, you had been swimming in fringe politics for, you know, years, which we like, have. like we have, yeah. which we have exactly. <laughs> so we knew who these people were and what they stood for. Yeah. Uh, people, they had this advantage in that they were just this kind of like um, mysterious gang of internet people that were like, they were this mysterious threatening thing. And, and Hillary brings them up uh, in one of her speeches and that was an advantage for them for a long time because they were able to kind of pull this thing where it's like, okay, you're conservative, but you you really hate the establishment because they've screwed you over. That means you're alt right, 
Mm-hmm. And they did this deliberately. And so people will be like, oh, okay, well, I'm all right. You know, that, you know, I, that, that makes sense. I don't agree with, yeah. uh, you know, mainstream Republicans. Yeah. Um, like Lauren Southern and Milo used to go around and say like, we're all right. And I was like, you are? No, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And so like when they finally though, like, and this gave them, I think it made them way overconfident and yeah. they thought that, you know, they, <laughs> I remember these people telling me like, oh yeah, you libertarians are such cucks and you're so stupid. Like you guys are on the way out. We're ascending. Our numbers are growing, blah, 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 blah. And to an extent As, that was, well, half yeah, there true. were more of them. They were, they yeah, were there growing were more like of them crazy, than there yeah. were previously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Except that it's, I was sitting there, I was like, guys, like nobody agrees with you. Yeah. <laughs> Literally no one. It's like, I know people think that like my political views are crazy. Like they think that like freedom and, you know, like real freedom, they're like, that's, that's insane. But I'm like, just wait until they find out what you believe. Yeah. Just wait. And they had their rally. They all showed up and they brought these torches and they brought, you know, all of these like white and nationalists down, down and, chargers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And chargers. Exactly. They show up. And of course, Antifa showed up and, and acted insane, too. I think, but I think it was like th- I, I think they, uh, what what with the Antifa thing, there was there was maybe only like 10 of them or something like that. And the rest were just like violent protesters. No, there was a lot. Well, OK, okay uh, so I'll get to this in a second. Yeah, but they because uh, I don't think a they, lot of them were like black blocking. I think that's the difference. I think a lot of people well, have been taking their tactics, but not calling themselves Antifa or wearing the, the masks. But there was only like so, a handful so, of them there. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just that's just a nitpick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. But I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> nitpick what you're nitpick in just a moment. Okay. Um, but the thing was it was like yeah, so they they think that, you know, they're growing and they have, you know, they have all this confidence and can't well and all these just complete like moron disgusting people show up in, in Charlottesville and are talking about white nationalism and chanting things like Jews will not replace us. And, uh, and everybody watching that, everyone watching that was like, Whoa, I don't agree with that. Literally nobody like normal people, which are the overwhelming majority of people in, you know, yeah. Normies. They were just like horrified, like, and rightly so obviously they were horrified. And that was like, okay, well you're, whatever brand pseudo brand you had going for the alt-right is done for good basically yeah and there was i think there was only like a hundred or no i think it was like a hundred that showed up to to the to the uh, the tiki torch and then there was like 300 altogether. and it's pretty safe to say that like every single alt writer that i knew except for like a handful i know were there like I were there I, th- I think they were i yeah. think that was that was the all of the right movement altogether. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's literally, it was like people came from Canada and it's like, you, they're like, Oh my God, people coming from all over the world. It's like, yeah, that was 95% of them yeah. were there physically. It's like nobody, yeah. nobody. It's a tiny, tiny movement. And, but what and I will say, them, getting to, yeah, and, and even that it was diluted with actual Nazis and with actual Nazis yeah, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like totally brand. crazy. Yeah. But uh, getting back to the Antifa thing. So, um, Michael Malice uh, went went down because uh, to Charlottesville because he's uh, his new book that's coming out in April is about the new right and basically breaking down all of these groups in the alt right and you know what do they, what do they believe who are they what do they mean when they say things so he goes down there and he gets there late it was like um, everything had already happened like the the like the street violence and and the the murder with the chart with the Dodge Charger had already happened. Um, but they were walking around and they weren't wearing anything that would identify them as being anything like politically. And there were still the like tens and tens of Antifa just walking around the streets and in masks. And these people were looking for fights with anybody because it's like, so my, my friends who were down there, they were like, yeah, we, you know, like we don't, we weren't wearing anything that would identify us as like political anything. We're not anybody. Nobody knows who we are. Um, but one of them uh, ran up to to one of my uh, one of my friends, ripped his hat off, and like got in his face. Uh, tried put like pushing him. Uh, there was another that uh, like they they're like walking by, and one of them is just like watching them. Gets really close. He's just like boo, you know, like tries to get them to like flinch. They were trying to start fights there, um, and. There, there were a lot of them and the, okay, I'll take that. The, yeah. And, so, and the other thing is that it's like, they were saying that like, you know, I don't even know, you know, 
like these these events with you know Antifa and uh, the these alt right people, they're starting almost to just attract people who just want to show up somewhere and fight. Yeah, like not even an yeah. ideological thing. It's like they're they're psychopaths that are like I can go and fight at this place and cause some mayhem and I'm going to do that. Yeah. That's what uh, I thought so a lot of these kind of rallies were, was just like, okay, someone's going to show up just so they can go and punch some Antifa people and Antifa people go there just so they can think they can punch a Nazi. Like that's right. That's what it is. And so I just sit there and watch it for what it is. It's, it's, it's political LARPing. There's no better way of putting it. Yeah. It's LARPing. Yeah. They're, they're LARPing, you know, brown shirts versus commies. <laughs> yeah. This, and <laughs> the Weimar Republic yeah, LARPing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's completely bananas. And so um as 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 truly fucked up as Charlottesville was, uh I it's I think it's done in just an incredible amount of harm to the alt right's image, yeah. which is wonderful. I think a, I think a lot of them kind of dropped off after that. At least the ones that weren't physically there. And maybe some that yeah. were there, maybe I don't know. But I yeah. know a lot of people who were like saying, "Oh, I'm alt right," have been like well, like there was, there's this YouTuber, I'm not going to name him. Uh, cause I'm, I don't know if you would want me <laughs> to associate him with the all right anymore, mm -hmm. but at first he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm just done drinking their Kool-Aid. It's bullshit. It was, yeah. and it was because of the Charlottesville thing. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. a wake up call for a lot of people, but, yeah. um, but it was also just like the, the shit with like the torches and these chants and stuff. It's like, I, do you think that anybody, anybody is going to be sympathetic to that? No. Like, you're just spewing this like evil <laughs> and the, the torch thing was obviously to like intimidate people. And they, they, that night with the torches, they apparently surrounded some people who were like, basically the, a few people showed up to like counter protest and didn't know how many of these guys were going to be there. They surrounded them around the statue Yeah, and the people kind of freaked out and then who knows who threw first punch or whatever, but that's when the first fights broke out. Um, so I don't know. I mean, these people are just it was a like, recipe. terrible. I don't really, I don't really care who punched first because I, I just see it as like they wanted to punch, and then the other people surrounded them, and of course they were going to punch. So I, I don't know. Yeah. I, th I think I, I don't, I don't care yeah. who throws the first punch. It's, it, you know, it's like going into a, a biker bar and you know, like saying like, ah, bikers are faggots. <laughs> You're yeah. going to get punched, and I don't <laughs> feel bad for you. <laughs> I don't like, yeah. oh, my, but my NAP, I don't care. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yeah, you deserved it, it. I just, I, it's like. You know, I, I always think like that I could not hate activists more, but then they always give me a reason to hate them even more. And like yeah, every Cat single time. Never, never disappoints in that department. Oh my God, that guy. Jesus Christ. Yeah, no, I mean, he, and he is exactly, um, he, he is the perfect example of, you know, everything that I say about activism being 100% true. Um, <laughs> that it just, it drives you insane. Uh, that it doesn't accomplish anything that's actually counterproductive um and that you're basically just doing it to feel better about yourself feel like you're doing something and it's going to ruin your life yeah. and ruin other people's lives and that guy has done the dumbest loudest most obnoxious activism his entire you know public life yeah. for like the last 10 years or however long it's been and he he keeps burning bridges with everyone every time he did that he got more extreme and he got um and he got more vulgar and crass and it was like oh okay well these people kicked me out it's not cuz i'm an oaf and that i'm a psychopath it's because uh they were too soft on something and so yeah. he'd like ratchet up on this shit until he turns into an outright fucking Nazi, yeah, you know, but, like he, I guess it's oh somewhat like a, like a Howard Stern problem. And I'm not saying he's, he's like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like Howard Stern came on the air and he was like edgy, but like he had that line where he forever, like, this is what I will do. This is what I won't do. And then that's it. And he just kept to that whole thing. People mm -hmm. today will still go back and say, Oh, it's a little edgy. But back in the day it was, it was completely different at the time, but his shows down from then, aside from cussing and, and sex stuff that you can do now on, he's not dealing with the FCC. It's still pretty much the same show. It's pretty. Yeah. 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 It's not any different. Yeah. But what, people, what a lot of people see in that is like, Oh, people want the shock, but they don't want the shock. That's not what they're, they're showing up for. Some of it is, but, right. So when you're trying to be the sh most shocking person, you're always going to have to escalate, escalate, because whatever you started at is going to be the new normal. Because that's what everybody was doing after Howard Stern came on. He was the new normal for a while. 
And yeah. so everybody was like, well, if I want, I got to be more shocking than that, more shocking than that, more shocking than yeah. that. And then, you know, you go from like, oh, edgy libertarian doesn't like feminist to like, let's literally gas the Jews. <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's, oh, my God. That's that's and the I trend. Had, I hadn't been paying attention to him for like a long time. Uh, and Jesus, <laughs> like it's it's crazy because it's like it's weird to say that, like, yeah, he wasn't always like that. Um yeah, but man, like I remember oh him man, back when he, he was just a, get like that. <laughs> I, I always talk about it. Like I actually knew who that guy was <laughs> before that, and I hated him before yeah. it was cool. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy because I don't think anyone remembers, but he was on the Colbert Report. Yeah, like, oh, I remember. It was like, the last episode. I, it was, really? It was the last episode of the Colbert Report before he signed off. And oh shit, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, and the thing is, it's like if you if you Google him, you can find this um, just public. <laughs> it's a complete public record of this guy's life just falling apart over and over. Ah, uh, I gotta call it quits. You gotta call it quits. All right, so. I gotta call it quits. Sorry, folks. I gotta so gotta we, get my laundry. <laughs> we can't we can't talk <laughs> about how Osama's no katsu otaku. Oh, no, that's right. We'll talk okay. about that next time. Next I have a mic time. now, so I'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, worms. Worms. <laughs>